All right, in this discussion, we're going to be looking at using the MK168 transistor checker to test MOSFETs. In particular, I'm going to focus on the IRF630 and the IRF9630. I use these in a number of H-bridge projects and motor controls and so forth. I did have another simple circuit you could build, and I'll just fly by it briefly. You can find out more about it in another video. But this will tell you a lot of things that that circuit will not tell you. And at the end, I'll have a discussion of issues from the spec sheets for the IRF 630 and the IRF 9630. This is a simple circuit. Yeah, you could build this. Takes a few parts. You can tell where the MOSFET cuts on and so forth. Not the deal here. The transistor checker will tell you a lot more details that this simple circuit cannot. Now we come to the good stuff. Semiconductors, MOSFETs, and transistors, and SCRs. Alright, this is a MOSFET. Drop in the socket clamp it down, hit test, and let's discuss the readings. Tells you that it's a P-channel uh, P MOSFET. Hit it again. It also tells you that it has an internal diode built in. Alright, and this is your source gate capacitance. VT is your turn on voltage. So this thing turned on it says at 3.6 volts. Alright, you'll see uh, 123 refers to 123 on the socket, or you notice 123 here. It tells you where the drain, the gate, the drain, and the source. So this helps you locate where your pin connections are. And one, two, three is gate source drain, which is correct. Let's try another MOSFET. This one's an in channel. I already know what it is. Okay, it's an in channel MOSFET. has an internal diode. The turn on voltage is 3.4 volts. And again, gate drain source. That is correct. Let's try one more MOSFET. It's an end channel, which is correct. Has another built-in diode. This one turns on, it says, at 3 volts. I, I, I wouldn't take that as... Remember, this is not a precision instrument. It's around 3 volts. My test using an actual voltmeter and a variable power supply most of these cut on between 3.3 and 4 volts some go a little over 4 identifies your uh, pins again alright here I've t I'm testing a large power MOSFET You notice it's an in channel. It identified the. Uh, let's see, gate source, source gate drain. Turn on voltage is 3.7 volts, and it has an internal diode. Note again the second line. When you first test it, there's your diode, there's your cut on voltage. No, that's your turn on voltage. And that's the uh, gate capac capacitance. Okay, yeah, this is the UF there was referring to the diode. 
Let's discuss some issues on MOSFET transistors, particularly power MOSFET switches. On a lot of my projects, I tend to use the IRF 630 and the IRF 9630. The IRF 630 is an in-channel device. The IRF 9630 is a P-channel device. There are some differences which I'm going to discuss here and when you're testing them and using them you have to note these differences particularly when you start sticking them in H-bridge motor controls. Let's look at the IRF 630 spec sheet first. Right at the top of the page it's rated at 9 amps, 200 volts and a 0.4 ohm uh, resistance when it's turned on all the way. That's the resistance from drain to source. If you notice the symbol down here, it also includes an internal parasitic suppression diode. Um, in my schematics, I usually don't draw that into the draw those into the schematics. You would be well advised to, if you're going to use a, another MOSFET, is to look at its spec sheet. If it has the internal suppressor diodes, you don't need to use external ones. The next issue is electrical characteristics. The 630 is 9 amps at 200 volts. Um, it has, an um, when it's turned all the way on, it's 0.4 ohms. Let's move down the page a bit. It comes in a TO220 case. In fact, both of these MOSFETs do. And the connections are the same, the gate, drain, and source. The flange out here is connected to the drain. What do we need to look for when we're looking at these kinds of MOSFETs? Well, first, that's the characteristics of the 630. The IRF9630, besides being a P-channel, note one difference right off the bat. When it's all the way cut on, it has 0.8 ohms resistance. Several people have said, well, my P-channel gets hotter than my N-channel. That is why it will normally do that. It will be slightly warmer than the in channel will be. That's normal if they're drawing the same current. Again, this one's rated at 6.5 amps at 200 volts. Once again, you have an internal parasitic diode. As before, I usually don't draw those in the schematics. I will usually put a note out there that they're internal to the device like the 630. The case style is exactly the same. Let's look at our electrical characteristics. Here, if you go further down the page, the ones you need to note the most. Okay, continuous drain. When you hear stuff like continuous drain current and so forth, this is assuming that this is a pulse. Most of the tests are with pulses. This says 9 amps. I'm going to be honest with you, I wouldn't run it above 6 or 7 continuously. When they give you these ratings, these are absolute maximum ratings. you are be wise not to run them at that level. You're asking for it. Another issue that constantly comes up in these uh, H-bridges, as you'll see, as you probably have seen in some of the test circuits that I've shown, is the gate to source voltage or VGS. It is very important you do not exceed VGS or you will blow the device. So you'll have to come up with different circuitry. If you're going to run the H bridge above 20 volts, you're going to have to use some different circuitry, which I'll be explaining in other videos. But that VGS is the key. A lot of the H bridges I designed, I use for 12 volts. Now, later on, we'll be look in another vid other videos. I'll be looking at higher voltages than that. Let's look at the gate 
um, voltage characteristics. What voltage do I put on the gate to drive so many amps? Well, this is a 630. It will go up to 9. If you read up in here, these are pulses, not continuing DC. If you go along here, look at that down here for the gate voltages. If you're running an Arduino and trying to uh, switch on the IRF 630 at 3.3 volts, it will not switch it on. Won't do it. Sorry. You're going to have to come up with some. This is why I always use 5 volt devices. If showing that this does, by the time I have 5 volts on it, I've pretty well switched it all the way on. If you're going to drive this device up over 6 amps or something, you'll have to uh, boost the voltage higher than 5 volts. But for most purposes, 5 volts is great. This is the N channel. The P channel is a slightly different animal. Besides having a uh, double the forward on resistance, your gate characteristics are different. At 4 volts, the thing is barely, is barely conducting. When I get up to 5, yeah, it does all right. But if you really want to switch the P channel 9630 all the way on, you're going to need to go to 6, 7 volts. So note those differences in characteristics. I've made up for this in the H-bridge designs that I had that it usually puts 12 or whatever volts on it. Both of these devices, once again, have a VGS, voltage gain source, a gate source limit of 20 volts.